Welcome to Dr. Tom Talks, today a special on the coronavirus. With the help of the biodigital human, I'm going to be answering two questions. One, how do you know if you have the coronavirus? And two, what should you do if you think you have the coronavirus? Before I start, this is not a replacement for your healthcare provider. If you think you have the coronavirus, you should call them. But let's answer that question, how do you know if you have the coronavirus? Well, definitively, you, you won't know if you have the coronavirus unless you get a test for it. But that doesn't mean that everyone should go and get tested. Let's look at the symptoms. It's a very perplexing virus because it can present with anything from no symptoms at all, so asymptomatic, all the way to multiple organ failure and death. But let's look at some of the studies that have been done recently and we can tease apart these symptoms. A recent study was done by the China CDC looking at over 70,000 patients and they bucketed disease severity into mild, severe and critical. And what you're looking at here is mild. This is mild disease and about 80% of the patients that they looked at were in the mild category. So you're thinking of upper respiratory stuff. So the symptoms of cold, maybe fever, flu-like symptoms. And another study was done by the World Health Organization looking at over 55,000 patients and they put these into percentages. So people who were in their study came in, 88% of them had fever, so that was the highest ranked. The next three were dry cough at 68%, fatigue at 38%, and then in, re in the respiratory section, coughing up phlegm from the lungs was, was about 33%. You can get all of these other stats on coronavirus.biodigital.com where you can take a look at this and see the other symptoms there. But those were the highest four. And don't forget, probably about 20%, maybe even more, were asymptomatic or are asymptomatic if you look at the Diamond Princess uh, cruise ship study. So the next bucket was severe symptoms. And this is different. This is not just upper respiratory stuff. This is lower respiratory stuff. So you're thinking of shortness of breath and you're thinking of a rapid respiratory rate here. And rapid respiratory rate, anything above 20 is considered to be abnormal, so faster than usual. But these patients were coming in in over 30 breaths a minute, so that's quite a lot. And shortness of breath isn't the same as congestion and you find it difficult to breathe through, to breathe through your nose. This is the feeling of running a marathon when you're sitting down still. It, you almost feel like you're drowning and you will know if you're in respiratory distress, you will know if you have shortness of breath. You know, you're really, really panting. These are the patients that may need hospitalization. These are the patients that may need to be put on a ventilator. But if you've just got the upper respiratory symptoms like a cold and fever, yes, do call your healthcare, healthcare provider, but speak to them first before you rush in to hospital because we're trying to reserve uh, ventilators for people who really, really need them and the healthcare system needs to really help these types of people at the moment. The final bucket of patients were critical patients. And these are patients that were breathing very rapidly, but then their lungs shut down on them, so they exhibit signs of respiratory failure, septic shock, multiple organ dysfunction, uh, or failure. And again, these are patients that are, that are very, very sick and need hospitalization. Uh, a small percentage of these patients uh, unfortunately die, but the percentage is probably much, much lower than we think it is at the moment because we don't know the real true case fatality rate because we don't know how many people have contracted coronavirus. So it may be a very small percentage. It may be less than 1%. Well, why do, does the coronavirus cause respiratory distress in the first place? Well, we're zooming into an alveolus right here. This is a typically air-filled sac in the lung, and that's how you get oxygen into your bloodstream. So typically oxygen comes in, goes across into your bloodstream, and then your organs can get oxygen. But what coronavirus is causing is a couple of things. One, pneumonia, which is inflammation, as you can see the redness here of this alveolus. Uh, and it also can cause acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is where this alveolus right here fills up with fluid. You see right there. It's because it becomes leakier, as do the blood vessels around it, because of inflammation. And that actually the oxygen getting across into your bloodstream and that's why you have to breathe so much more quickly to get more oxygen into your body that's why people are in respiratory distress so these are the people that definitely do need help so the conclusion is if you feel as though you may have coronavirus definitely call your healthcare provider but if you don't if you're not short of breath it's unlikely that you will need to be hospitalized so let's decrease the burden on the healthcare system call your healthcare provider find out uh, whether you should go to hospital or not, rather than taking yourself there before you speak to your healthcare provider. Let's reduce rates of transmission. Please share this and educate everyone you know, coronavirus.biodigital.com, and reduce the fear of the unknown. 
This is Dr. Tom Talks, and this is the coronavirus.